I'm honored to be invited in this uh, very special colloquium. In contrast to the other two uh, distinguished panel members, I'm uh, quite new in this field of palliative care. Uh, most of my experience is in other uh, global public health issues. And as uh, it was introduced, uh, my, I do research mainly from medical anthropological perspective. So, uh, and uh, just to mention that I work with Global in uh, uh, Glasgow University, but I come from Bangladesh. So I'll speak uh, mostly uh, kind, of, uh, kind of a newcomer or almost an uh, outsider in this field of uh, uh, palliative care who has more questions rather than answers. And in this pre presentation, I will try to actually raise uh, one or two uh, ideological or conceptual issues around this whole uh, global health approach to palliative care. I mean, it's clear that uh, end-of-life care will have major uh, global importance in 21st century as the uh, world population ages and grows. Uh, and as individual patterns of disease, symptoms, and disability in later life uh, become more complex. And also as the social circumstance and the communities to support dying become either more enabled or more impoverished. But the paradox is uh, there's still dearth of interest in the global health agenda. Uh, as, as I'm aware that uh, palliative care is not included in this uh, new uh, sustainable development goals. In this connection, uh, it's also, I think, important to keep in mind that although uh, palliative care or end-of-life care is a glo global challenge, but there are huge differences and uh, global differences. So different countries are in different demographic stages. And also the countries are in different level of health system preparedness at one end. Uh, very few countries where uh, palliative care is integrated in the mainstream uh, uh, health system. Uh, in the other end, there is no palliative care at all. And most importantly, the whole, uh, there are huge differences in terms of uh, local moral worlds, the meaning of death and, and the understanding of death and uh, issues around that, and uh, different political legal system around dying referring to the whole debate about uh, assisted dying, euthanasia, and uh, so on. And finally, there are differences in availability of evidences. A recent uh, uh, systematic review on uh, palliative care research shows that 90% of the research on palliative care has been done on only in uh, few European and North American uh, countries. So within this uh, scenario, within this context uh, background, uh, what is the global future of dying? Uh, so a, like a deep future. Uh, I would like to uh, mention two statements uh, from two uh, significant figures uh, in palliative care uh, to, to try to get some uh, sense of this, this uh, idea of uh, global future. So one is from uh, the uh, former uh, WHO uh, head uh, of uh, palliative care, Jan Stanford. In one of his papers, he recently uh, stated this. Palliative medicine must, from the beginning, encompass a global perspective with the goal to reach the greatest number of people who can benefit from it, namely those from in the developing countries. There cannot be one ideal future for the developed nation and another future for the developing nations. It is either one common future or none. So he's talking about the disparity between developed and developing countries, but I would like to uh, draw attention to this whole notion of common future. So he's talking about a common future, either a common future or none. Now I would present another uh, statement from a different uh, palliative care practitioner, uh, who is uh, also a speaker here. Uh, I'm talking uh, about Suresh Kumar. Uh, uh, who, who will be speaking tomorrow, uh, the founder, uh, one of the founders of the Kerala, uh, Kerala model uh, in India. So in one of his interviews recently, he, he mentioned this. Despite attempts from various corners uh, for more than three decades globally, palliative care is accessible to only less than 8% uh, of the needy today. It should be obvious uh, to everybody by now that we are unlikely to achieve any meaningful coverage ever if we continue to take the uh, conventional track. And 
community participation in palliative care can yield result. He is also talking about this disparity, but uh, he's clearly saying that uh, the, we would not get any significant result through the conventional track. And he's offering a, a different approach, uh, a community participation or community-based uh, palliative care uh, uh, approach. Now, if we go back to this uh, notion uh, that Stanford talk about, uh, a common future. So I was wondering then what should be the common future uh, of global palliative care? Do you have a clear understanding of this common future? Is it an institutionalized specialized service delivery model or is it uh, a community development generalist model? Uh, it's not just the generalist model, but also the, or, or the community development generalist model. Or is it an integrated one? And if it is an integrated one, what exactly is the feature of that uh, integrated one? Uh, we, we talk about uh, patient-centered uh, palliative care. Uh, and there's a lot of discussion about autonomy uh, of the patient. But this whole, there are cultural difference of uh, the, the autonomy and the sense of individual. Many, in many societies, many culture, uh, the self is more of a relational self. And how do we uh, uh, combine, integrate, it, uh, integrate these things? From my own experience working in uh, different global health projects in different geographical areas uh, uh, and, and, and different parts of the world, I have uh, observed that when uh, people talk about bridging the gap between developed and developing countries, there is a notion, that uh, assumption, that uh, the developing countries should catch up with the developed countries at some point. And uh, I think there is... Uh, there's a need to uh, have a closer look to this, this whole uh, idea of catching up and, and, and the notion of uh, 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 this, this whole uh, concept of uh, uh, developing uh, and, and integrating these two, two approaches. Uh, to, to problematize this, this uh, concept, I'd like to bring an a idea from a different discipline, uh, from the subaltern studies uh, thinker, Deepesh Chakraborty, who talks about the waiting room uh, of history. He discussed uh, this in relation to the, uh, the history of modernity, where the whole notion is that the first site of modernity is in the West, and it needs to be transferred to other parts of the world. And the other part of the world is not yet ready to accommodate all these modernist uh, uh, elements. And they need to wait in an imaginary waiting room of history in order to graduate to modernity. And this is a narration of transition which, which reproduces the European archetype and where the subject of elsewhere is always perceived as uh, in terms of lack, absence, and incompleteness. And there is, I think, a risk uh, in this universalizing linear developmental vision of future. Now, what is the uh, implication of this argument uh, in the ideologies of dying or the future uh, uh, of uh, global dying? Uh, we have been asked to talk about the transfer of different models from one context to another context. Uh, uh, my colleague recently mentioned, uh, they mentioned about this recent uh, publication of this economist uh, ranking of uh, quality of death. This is an uh, interesting example of this whole idea of waiting room of history. The whole assumption is that all the uh, countries uh, in, the, in, the, in, the list, in the bottom should aspire to, to have a uh, palliative care uh, model uh, as per the, the high-ranking high countries. So in, in what way? Is it through transferring the models that, has, that the all high-ranking countries have developed to those uh, countries? By the way, uh, the country where I come from, Bangladesh, has the, uh, is at the bottom. So should Bangladesh aspire to have uh, a St. Christopher uh, hospice? Uh, uh, and, and once they get the St. Christopher hospice, would think that they have achieved the uh, palliative care model. My colleagues say that although these are, uh, they, they are high-ranking countries, but uh, there are questions can be raised whether it is a, at all the ideal model uh, to be transferred in different parts of the world. UK has uh, uh, topped the rank, uh, but uh, I mean we know the 
much celebrated uh, Liverpool care pathway developed in UK has been transferred in different part of the world and this is now abundant in UK. Uh, and this whole pr ranking process also can be critiqued in, in various ways. So we, it's also important to keep in mind that when a, a, a model or a idea or a technology developed in, in one context and transferred it to another context, the receiving context, receiving country, engages with this idea, technology, or uh, model in different ways. And through this process, actually, they translate the, the whole thing. They translate the idea, they translate the technology, they translate the uh, model. Uh, I would say uh, the Kerala model is an example of translation. So they have taken this whole uh, ideology of palliative care and they have translated it uh, into, uh, according to their own political, social, uh, cultural uh, context. And as I, I learned that uh, now Kerala model is being transferred to or, or implemented in other parts of India and also uh, beyond India. But then again, there is a kind of, it's not in the same way. Uh, they are again translating or re-translating the, uh, the model and into according to their own uh, context. It has been uh, t uh, transferred to uh, West Bengal in Thailand in, in, in Indonesia. So I think when we talk about transferring uh, our, our, our future of global uh, palliative care, uh, it's, it's uh, important to think about this whole, uh, have a critical uh, look at transfer and translation of different models. Uh, because uh, as we all know, palliative care is an intersubjective process and body of the dying person becomes arena for conflicting subcultures of providers, policy makers and relatives. And there are risks of uncritically transferring palliative care models from one context to another context. And, uh, and with that, uh, I would come back again to this, the, the earlier question uh, uh, of what is the global future of dying as, uh, is there a common global future? And I would like to conclude uh, by, again, two supplementary questions. As I said, I have more questions. So should we frame our discussion on the transfer of different palliative care models or on the translation of different models? And uh, should we aim for a common future for developed and developing countries or a plural one? With that, I'll uh, conclude. Thank you very much.